Hi, I'm Dr. George Ho of Vancouver. The first part of this movie is the preview of the next movie that I'm going to do a review on how Mr. Sun Lu Tang chose the exact day of his death, just like any enlightened Taoist or Buddhist. Mr. Sun is an expert martial artist famous for his Tai Chi Chuan and, and Ba Gua Zhang. He is one of the few internal Kung Fu masters who die in this supernatural manner. I ascribe this to his heavy emphasis on the practice of Zhan Zhang, which is the same as standing meditation. The significance of Mr. Sun's practice is that he has proven that enlightenment can be attained by the practice of effective meditation. In any manner, good meditation can be practiced in a lotus sitting posture, in a sleeping posture, and even in a standing posture. Just like Mr. Sun, who incidentally has the same surname as Sun Burr. The second part of this movie is the edited complete movie on the interpretation of the 14 poem that recorded the path of enlightenment of the Lady Taoist Sun Burr, who became an immortal in 12 years. In this movie, I'm using an ancient Chinese Lady Taoist Sun Buer to show us what we can do with our life, especially towards the end when most of us are waiting to die. Most of us try to enjoy these decades of leisure with fun activities, but Sun Buer actively planned for her transition into a new life form. She spent the last 12 years of her life to become an immortal. Sun Bu Er, one of the Taoist seven masters of Chan Zhen, who lived in the 12th century China. Her history should be very exciting for ladies. Sun Bu Er was married with three children. Her husband Ma Yu was the student of Wang Chongyang. At the age of 51, she took up the study of the Tao. She became a disciple of Wang Chongyang too, serving as the Taoist priestess. She eventually left her home and traveled to the city of Luoyang, where she only after 12 years of practice at Feng Sheng Wu Cave, she attended the Tao at the age of 63 and became an immortal. Sun Bu Er left behind 14 poems as the record and the manual of her successful practice. According to a famous Taoist practitioner, Chen Jingling, her case can illustrate that ladies need only one third of the time of male practitioner to reach the immortal level. These 14 poems can be used by male practitioner too. There is only one poem that is exclusively for ladies practitioner because it involves menstruation. And then this is the poem, Zhan Long, which literally means cut the dragon. The dragon in this poem represented menstruation and to cut the dragon means to rejuvenate yourself to the physical state of puberty when menstruation has not started. This is the first of the 14 poem called Soul Sin, which literally means receiving the heart. However, it will be misleading to translate this term literally, making this vague term even more misleading. I think it will be clearer to viewer when I interpret this term in my own words. The everlasting Xian Tian Yi Qi, symbolized by the circular sign of Wu Ji that gives rise to the yin and the yang has been in existence long time before I was conceived as an embryo in my mother's womb. In order to be united with the everlasting Xian Tian Yi Qi, energized by the universal Tao, I have to do my practice 
very patiently like polishing a piece of jade or like refining gold. I have to calm my mind by focusing on intangible images like a mantra. I should not focus on any particular part of the body which might be hurt by the intense focusing. The second poem is called Yang, Qi, using breathing, Qi, cultivation, to revert our earthly body back to the state like Xin Tian Yi Qi. The moment when we were born, we have entered the life cycle of getting mature, growing old, and then die. To break away from this cycle, we have to practice breathing to transform the body back to the Xin Tian Yi Qi state that does not need breathing like an embryo. The third poem is called Xing Gong, which the description of the body's reaction to the arrival of the Xin Tian Yi Qi when one's meditation Kung Fu has sophisticated. The beginning term Lian Xi means the slowing of breath. Ying Shen means focusing the spirit. It describes the calmness of the mind and the cessation of breathing. Yin Xiang means the sign of the body in the yin form. Saliva is an example of yin Xiang. Similarly, all hormonal secretions belong to this category and they should be gathered in the frontal meridian called the Ren Mai. The Ren Meridian, Yang Guang means the body sign in the Yang form. Like heat and light, they should rise up in the back of the Du Meridian. When the incoming Xian Tian Yi Qi cleans up the various meridian, hidden sicknesses may be triggered and they have to be treated by medical means. Ancient people had limited medical resources and could only let them heal naturally. We are a lot more resourceful and should treat these sicknesses with modern medical means. Sun Bur described these sicknesses being triggered as rainstorm from the head to the pelvic region. When these sicknesses were over, they disappeared with a loud thunder. I think these were her real experiences. Hi, I'm Dr. George Ho of Vancouver. Before I start with the fourth poem of Sun Bur's 14th poem, I would like to supplement what I have told everybody about what where and what to concentrate in the first poem of Sun Bur. I should not focus on any particular part of the body which might be hurt by the intense focusing. However, the upper and the lower Dan Tian have been so much emphasized by ancient Tai Chi sages that many instructors think that it is natural to concentrate on these two Dan Tian. At least two ancient sages told us that the cranial sacral postural reflex of Tai Chi is the criteria that practitioners could use to reassure themselves that they had sophisticated this practice of both the dynamic and the static kind of meditation. They said the abdominal part below the umbilicus seemed to adhere to the spine and the adhesion intensified with the Tai Chi move. Qian Dong Huang Lai Qi Tie Bei. The head feels as light as if it was floating in the air. Men Shen Qing Li Ding Tou Xian, according to both Huang Zhong Yue, and Wu Shang. This is probably why most Chinese teachers of martial art or Qigong usually quote ancient sources to say that the Dan Tian is somewhere under the umbilicus. However, Master Huai Jin Nan told us in his book Tao and Longevity, My Body Transformation, that concentrating in the lower abdomen, especially the lady, is not very good because it might induce internal bleeding of that area. I agree with Master Nam because I heard from a famous meditation instructor, Ms. Ye, telling me a story that a man concentrate too much at the upper dantian in his head during meditation and Tragically, he got a stroke 
a hemorrhagic stroke. That means the artery burst open and blood spilled into the brain. This fourth poem tells us the concrete sign of rejuvenation for a female Taoist practitioner. Sun Bu did not mention the corresponding sign for the male practitioner, but don't worry, I have found those elusive corresponding signs for the male practitioner, and I'll tell the viewer in details in this series. I'll interpret the fourth poem now. This poem is exclusively for ladies practitioner because it involves menstruation. And then this is the poem, Zhan Long, which literally means cut the dragon. The dragon in this poem represents menstruation, and to cut the dragon means to rejuvenate yourself to the physical state of puberty when menstruation has not started. A woman as old as Sun Bu er in the late 40 or early 50 is considered to be postmenopausal. After menopause, the lady's secretion of estrogen dwindles. And estrogen is not only essential for the development of secondary sex characteristics such as breast and body hair, it also stimulates the hypothalamus of the brain, which is an important part of the practice of Taoism. This poem by Sun Bui teaching rejuvenation for ladies has significant meaning for ladies senior because Sun Bu Er started her Taoist practice in her early 50s and was in her menopause. This means that her practice regressed her back to the state of enough estrogen secretion that stimulated the ovary to produce egg again. Then she continued her practice to rejuvenate herself back to the premenstrual puberty state. Many people have overlooked the significance of rapid rejuvenation, which only took her 12 years. The practice of the first 100 days described by the first three poems is very important. To reinforce what I have told you in the last movie about the first three poems, I think it will be a lot clearer if you watch the movie on the opening of the Central Meridian, the basic fundamental Kung Fu that ancient Taoists tried to accomplish in 100 days. And this is why it's called Bai Ri Zhu Ji. To accomplish this Bai Ri Zhu Ji Kung Fu, one has to enter the mental state called Ding, which is called Samadhi in Buddhism and Jie Dan in Taoism. Blue is the color that symbolizes this mental state as shown in this Buddhist picture of Yao Shi Fu. After the central meridian is open in the 100th day for the Manu Kung Fu, the frontal run meridian and the posterior Du meridian in the back are freely open for Qi to circulate. In modern medical terms, the hormonal secretion of the various glands are remodeling the nervous system that regulates the internal organ and their rejuvenating effects are manifest with the externally visible sign of rejuvenation. In Sun Bu's case, one of the signs of rejuvenation is that she started menstruation again in her menopausal 50 and it was accompanied by other signs like better skin complexion and if her breasts were sagging because of aging they would firm up like young girls again the skin is the biggest organ of the body and it responds well to extra secretion of female hormone i have at least two visible signs of rejuvenation First, I do not need reading glasses anymore. And secondly, my chin wrinkles are becoming less prominent. During the practice phase of the fourth poem, one has to stay patiently in a very calm meditative state and wait for the young sign to appear as heat in the Dan Chen area. Then rapid breathing symbolized by the Chinese character Feng meaning wind is used to drive the 
J Tiger 入腹 meaning the rejuvenating female hormone in the form of heat up the two meridian in the back until it reaches the upper palate. Poetically described as the Chu Chiao, a bridge formed by a group of birds. This is the point in the Mao where the Du meridian join the Ren meridian. Then slow breathing is used to let the heat slowly descend back down to the Ren meridian to the Dantian. Gradually, menstruation will stop completely, and the stoppage should be accompanied by other rejuvenation signs like better skin complexion and the white hair turning black again. These signs will be more and more prominent when the practice of enlightenment and longevity become more and more sophisticated. I'll do the other 10 poems in following movies regarding the sixth poem, which is Tai Si. I think you can take a look at my movie on Tai Si and then you'll be a lot clearer of what Sun Bui meant by Tai Si. The corresponding rejuvenation sign of menstruation for the Taoist male practitioner will be described in the movie that follows. Hi, I'm Dr. George Ho of Vancouver. This movie interprets the sixth and the seventh of the fourteenth poem of Sun Bui. The sixth poem is called Tai Si, and the seventh poem is called Hu Huo, which has been wrongly and literally translated as a fu on fire. Fu means the magical written charm that has no apparent meaning. If you look at the picture here, fu huo are the shortened forms of zhen huo and tui fu, the two turning points of the yin and the yang phases of the day and the night. The seventh poem tells you how to practice the Tai Si in the sixth poem. According to the waxing of the yin and the yang, each of which has six phases. The yang phase begins from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. called Zhi Si Jin Huo. The yin phase begins from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. called Wu Si Tui Hu. During the yang phase, which can mean your mental spiritual status or the time of the day, one can be more aggressive in the cultivation of one's mental spiritual kung fu. But in the yin phase, one has to be calm and do not attempt to let the spirit the ball out of the body. Because it is not ready to wander out and once it goes out, it might not be able to return to the body because the kung fu of the spirit yin bo is not sophisticated enough yet. It needs a lot of cultivation in the Tai Si status. Tai Si, which has been inadequately translated as embryonic breathing. And embryo's lungs are not functioning yet. It is the mother's lung doing the breathing part of the respiration for the embryo. The functions of the rest of the respiration are shared by both the embryo and the mother. When the Taoists and the Buddhists talk about Tai Si, they're talking about embryonic respiration, not breathing. According to Master Huai Ji Nan, who quote Lao Zi saying that Zhuan Qi Zi Yu Neng Ying Yi Fu, meaning that if one can practice a specialized mode of breathing to soften the body, making it as flexible as a baby, and in the practice of meditation, if one can reach the mental state of samadhi called ding, one can revive the embryonic respiration called bao shen qi, which is the root of life and one could become disease-free. Tai Si, according to Master Nam, is cultivated in the meditative state of Samadhi or Ding. When Bao Shen Qi is revived and as a result, very little lung breathing is required. 
This is why I claim that translating Tai Shi as embryonic breathing is misleading, because an embryo does not breathe with its lung at all. Bao Shun Qi has a deep religious connotation. Bao in the Buddhist sense is karma, which in Chinese is called Ye Bao. Buddhists, including Master Nan, believe that one's life will improve with good deeds done in this life as well as in past lives. This connotation implies that to revive Bao Shun Qi, which externally observable as Tai Shi, you need more than correct technique. You need to perform good deeds. If one literally takes Lao Zi's saying of Juan Chi Zhi Yu Neng Yin Yu Fu, meaning to practice a specialized mode of breathing to soften the body like a baby, and think one can achieve Tai Shi, one could be quite disappointed. Please look at the newborn baby in the pictures. The rhythmic movement of the abdominal part below the umbilicus is a sign of the residual bao shen qi, which will disappear in about one year and be totally replaced by zhang yang qi. Our normal breathing, which nourishes all of us, zhang yang in Chinese means to help grow. Most of us use Zhang Yang Chi until we die, unless one can practice meditation to reach the state of Ding and can revive the domain Bao Shen Qi. The embryonic mode of respiration called Tai Shi will reappear, and the practitioner does not seem to need to. Breathe like an average individual. It is a natural occurrence from meditation. The swimming reflex demonstrated by the baby in the pictures can be regarded as a scientific and objective evidence of the presence of Bao Shen Qi in newborn baby. This 11 days old baby's residual embryonic swimming reflex of Closing the breathing pathway in our water made people think that it could swim. The truth is that in the amniotic fluid inside the wound, an embryo has to shut the breathing pathway. Some swimming instructors claim that it is very easy for baby to learn to swim. However, this set of embryonic reflex fade out in a year. In all babies, as observed by a more experienced swimming instructor, who said, by the time a baby is six months old, they've lost some of that natural affinity. In this book shown in the picture written in Chinese, Master Nam taught Mr. Peter Strange in detail about Zhang Yang Qi, Bao Shen Qi and Tai Si, which by now most audience would agree that it takes more than breathing practices to acquire. In the same book, Master Nam also talk about Zhong Zhi Qi, the third factor that join a sperm and an egg together to form a person. I think that Zhong Zhi Qi is crucial for rejuvenation. There must be some good reason why Master Nam did not say too much about Zhong Ji Qi. Regarding how to practice meditation and anapana breathing, according to Master Nam's instruction, I have built in three movies in this movie, and I have put the three links in the illustration down below. Hi, I'm Dr. George Ho of Vancouver. This movie continues with the detailed interpretation of Sun Bu's 14 poem, and I shall be using Master Huai Jin Nan's opinion in chapter 42nd of his book, Tao and Longevity, Mind-Body Transformation, to illustrate Sun Bu's poetic images of the interaction of Jing Qi Shen and Lian Jing Hua Qi in the Taoist practice to release the domain energy called Qi Ji in Taoism, which is similar to Kundalini in the practice of yoga.
in the eighth poem, Jie Yao, which literally means receiving the medicine. However, when you study the whole poem and connect it to the ninth poem, Lian Shen, and the twelfth poem, Mian Bi, you will know that the Yao here refers to the Qi formed from the sublimated Jing, and it gradually helped the ordinary practitioners mind body complex to lin jing xing which means to transform the sublimate jing into a young child that can develop into a superhuman which is figuratively being called a young child yu hai in the ninth poem bi guan chen yang jie describe the posture and the tai si respiratory mode during meditation. You are watching how your body in the Tai Si respiratory mode turn into a pure yang form, Chen Yang. Bu here means the newly formed mind-body complex has to be cared like a baby being breastfed for three years. Ko Bu Yu San Nian and then the practitioner has to mean bi jiu nian, which means to meditate with the face towards the wall, like Dharma, for nine years, as described in the twelfth poem. When this process is mature and this new super mind body complex will be able to fly, as the last verse described, wan man ji fei teng. The eighth, the ninth, and the ten poem describe the process of the sublimation of Jing into Qi, Kolin Jing Hua Qi in Chinese. Lian Shen in the ninth poem describe the manifestations of the sublimation of Shen of this newly transformed superhuman. The muscle of the pelvic floor, figuratively called the Di Men, the gate of the earth are tightly contracted. The top of the skull, figuratively called the Tian Chu in Chinese, has to open. First, it means that the practitioner will feel light shining to the top of the skull, and the new superhuman is like a cleanly washed yellow sprout, and the head feels movement of vibration. Fu Shi in the ten poem literally means to ingest, but this poem describes the final stage of the mind body's manifestation of qi that has been supplied from Jing the hormone. Sun Bu used the poetic image of ingesting medicine to describe these manifestations. First, since all the meridians of this new superhuman are open, the practitioner can absorb the energy from the sun and the moon. Second, the body becomes very light. And third, from the energy of the Yuan Shen formed from the Jing and the Qi, it emits light from millions of skin pores. With more cultivation, that I'm going to describe in the next four poem, this Yuan Shen can come out from the top of the head and exist on its own. To become an immortal like Sun Bu might seem to be a fantasy, but the Taoist practice of Tai Shi and meditation does have some rejuvenation effects that have occurred to Master Nam and me who follow his practice of sitting and sleeping meditation. Master Nam did not need to wear glasses in his old age. And I have succeeded in reproducing his results. I have been able to read, write, and dry for a few years now, and I am now 72 years old in 2018. Nearly everyone has to wear glasses for presbyopia, starting in his or her late 40s. I did need that when I was in my late 40s. Uh, but after practicing Master Nam's sleeping and sitting meditation, to the extent of some initial 
success in the acquisition of the respiratory mode of ties. My eyesight has rejuvenated so well that I have not needed glasses for presbyopia. For a few years now, I have an eye examination report by an OD to back up my claim. I think this is the result of Lin Xing Fa Qi. Lin Jing Fa Qi is one of the most essential Taoist meditation practices. To promote the extra generous secretion of hormone, are modern terms for Jing, that nourishes tissue growth in the various organs, are modern terms for Qi. This 92 years old lady is the third example of Lin Jing Hua Qi. When she cure her optic nerve atrophy by a form of standing qigong practice. Then she started learning Hun Yuan Zhang, a form of standing qigong demonstrated by the founder of Yi Quan, Master Huang Shang Jai. He is a famous martial artist. The instruction of how to practice Hun Yuan Zhang are in this picture. You can take a good look. On top of Hun Yuan Zhang, Miss Mi also learned Jing Gong Zhi from Master Huang Shang Jai. The instructions of how to practice Jing Gong Zhi are in the picture, and you can take a good look if interested. This old lady in the picture may be another example of Qi helping vision. She claimed that she had optic nerve atrophy. Miss Mi's optic nerve atrophy was probably caused by open angle glaucoma, which develops slowly over time and there is no pain. Side vision may begin to decrease and follow by central vision, resulting in blindness if not treated. Miss Mi was lucky that she learned this Lin Jing Fa Qi technique that can repair nerve cell by the standing meditation from the Yi Chuan master Huang Shang Jai who taught her to the technique called Jing Gang Zhi. Jing Gang has two meanings. One means a diamond, and then the other means the god like this one. One of his manifestations is called Jing Gang Wu Wu, the angry stare of the god of Jing Gang. Standing meditation called Zhang Zhang and Jing Gang Zhi cure Miss Mi, optic nerve, atrophy. She claimed she did not have to wear glasses even though when she was 90. Similarly, Master Nam did not have to wear glasses even when he was 80 or 90. The above three cases of exceptional vision repair by Lin Jing Hua Qi are excellent examples to illustrate Sun Bu'er's vapor description of Lin Jing Hua Qi in the eighth the 9 and the 10 po poem. Hi, I'm Dr. George Ho of Vancouver. This movie continues with the detailed interpretation of Sun Bu'er's 14 poem. The 11 poem is called Pi Wu, which has been misleadingly translated as fasting. It is misleading because one should not fast in this practice. The need to ingest less food has to be a natural outcome of Lin Jing Hua Qi. At this stage, your digestive system is so much improved by the sublimated Qi that you do not need that much food. In fact, Master Nam has warned his follower not to practice Pi Gu when their Kung Fu is not sophisticated enough to be able to eat very little. He cited two tragic cases. Two of his followers were so impressed with the radiance emitting from him when he was practicing Pi Gu for over 20 days that they tried to imitate him. One ended up losing part of the stomach because of gastrointestinal bleeding. And the second one lost the leg. At this stage, your Kung Fu should have attended the stage of Qi Men Bu Shi Shi, 
which means that the digestive system is so much improved by the supplemented qi that it needs very little food. Moreover, since the body can absorb energy from the sun and the moon, very little food is needed. If really needed, one can eat raw yam and reiji, mushroom. If the practitioner does not know the correct ways to practice biku and eat cooked food, he or she cannot enter heaven. The ultimate goal of doing this Taoist practice. The twelve poem tells you to cultivate the newly emerged yang shen by meditating in a small hut for nine years, which means as long as needed, the best outcome during this practice is to acquire the status of a yang shen, which is a hierarchy higher than any form of yin shen. There are two kinds of yuan shen. The yang, yang means positive, yang yuan shen has the real body, and the yin, yin means negative, yin yuan shen does not have a real body, but it has a virtual body that can act like a real body. According to a famous Chan master, Master Huai Jin Nan, he has never seen any yang shen, but knows that Buddha told four of his law Han to stay alive until the return of another Buddha. They are the four law Han as shown in the pictures. Master Nam said only Yang Shen can live as long as the earth, so they have thousands of years of life. In order to become a Yang Shen, one has to emerge as a Yin Shen first, and after a long period of purification, one can become a Yang Shen, as shown in the picture. In one of my movies, I told you that Sun Bu Er has become an immortal, and she probably an example of Yin Shen, acting like a fairy that helped a lot of people. The significance of this story is that when we die, we emerge as a form of Yin Shen called Zhong Yin Shen, which people sometimes see as ghost. Master Nam also told us that all the Dalai Lama reincarnated through the medium of Zhong Yin Shen, which is scientifically called by Western philosopher as consciousness independent of the brain. For nearly half a century, psychiatrists like Professor Grayson has studied near-death experiences. They published many articles and a few books like this one as shown in the picture to support the theory that consciousness exists independent of the brain. These individuals probably appear accidentally as yin shen, and after the near-death experiences, they behave more like yin shen or fairies. They are more spiritual, less materialistic, more compassionate to help others, and can see more significant in the meaning of life. These are the quality of Taoist immortal and the goals of all religious practices, and our efforts to supplement our Jing Qi to Shen will be, make us into a better person and probably can emerge as a Yin Shen. This is my new definition of Shen Ming in meditation and Tai Chi as a form of integrative mind-body training. From the dialogue in this book between Master Nam and Peter Dringe, who was named a strategy of the century, the quickest way to, to control how one dies in order to emerge as yin shen is to practice anapana and a form of meditation taught by Buddha called Bai Gu Guan in Chinese. It is translated as White Skeleton Meditation in English. I have a movie on Anapana breathing in my rejuvenation video series, and I will build that link into this movie and put the link down below in the movie 
illustration regarding the practice of Bai Gu Guan White Skeleton Meditation. I'll write up some of it in this new and enriched Shen Ming article. This is the 13th poem, The Emergence of the Yuan Shen. This is why the poem's title is called Chu Shen, The Emergence, the Chu of her Yuan Shen. After meditating for a long time, her Yuan Shen came out Chu, and this Yuan Shen is being described as Shen Wai Fu Yu Shen. A new body has emerged from this practice. The 14th poem is called Chong Ju, which is a Taoist term describing the rise of a fairy. This is the final result of Shen Bu'er's Taoist practice. She has emerged from the bondage of her physical body and has emerged as an immortal. She was on her way to the fairyland called Peng Lai. When her husband Ma Dan Yang knew this, he was laughing heartily. As described in another poem in the ancient Taoist canon, Dao Zhang. This poem is shown in the left bottom corner of the picture on the left side. Dao Zhang, meaning Taoist canon, consists of around 1400 texts. They were collected by ancient Taoist monks in an attempt to bring together all of the teaching of Taoism. To conclude this series on the achievement of Sun Buer, a brave ancient Chinese lady's success in completing the difficult task to become an immortal in 12 years, one third of the time of an average male practitioner. I would like to point out that Taoism is very liberal towards the lady who in ancient China had very limited upward social mobility and job opportunity. She is the good model for all of us. Hi, I'm Dr. George Ho. This concludes the movie. And if you like this movie, please click like and please share it with your friend in other media like the Facebook. And it would really motivate me to make more movies like this if you would subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Dr. George. Subscription is totally free.